I'm drinking from my Star Wars cup today. I thought that was cool. I mean, I what, one of my many Star Wars cups. <clears throat> well, hello everyone and welcome to uh, the Films and Fika podcast. Um, this is our first episode. I'm excited. This is, of course, the uh, podcast where we uh, rant about movies and have a cup of coffee, also known as a Fika. Uh, I'm here again with a cup of Star Wars coffee. I mean, I hope it doesn't have blue milk in it and uh, some American blueberry muffins that my mom had made. So they're very good, actually. What are you having? I'm also having coffee, mostly because of the Fika aspect of this. Um, I don't usually drink coffee anymore, which is weird, because we used to drink coffee a lot. But Dude, yeah. yeah. Ever since I moved back to Sweden, I'm drinking so much coffee. Sorry. Like, I think I'm averaging on two and a half cups a day. Yeah, no, for sure. When I was over there, that was the most I drank coffee after college, for sure. Well, it was the it was the East Coast of this of America. I find the East Coast of America. I think New York is one of the biggest drinkers. Norway is the world biggest. Regardless, <clears throat> I wanna I wanna th- I wanna throw it off to you and explain fika as the Mexican you are. Since I'm the Swede, it's native to me. But um, yes. would you please explain the concept of fika? I would love to hear it. Well, so here's the thing. From what I understand, and this is like me as a foreigner, and the fact that. I harass you for like Swedish culture stuff. Yeah. Fika is the most interesting one because it is very similar to something that we have in Mexico, but not exactly the same. But I like the idea of going up to someone and asking them to sit and have a cup of coffee and maybe like a pastry or something and then just like shoot the shit. I think that's really cool as a concept. Um, so yeah, that's fika for me. It's like grabbing a cup of coffee with a friend. I believe. I believe definitely that you have explained this to me before. But what is the Mexican version of it? So basically, like after you have lunch um, with your family or with your friends, and after dinner, uh, fika. Yeah, exactly. It's basically that. So you mm. finish, you eat dessert and stuff, but then you have coffee or like a digestive and you just talk for like an hour or so yeah 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 yeah. well sweden is taking that i i assume the step further like if you would were to ask my um my grandfather the it would be very specific how at let's say well around noon realistically you would have a pre-lunch fika i guess it translates to and then after yeah. after lunch you would have afternoon fika etc etc the best the best way i can explain it is essentially the the british tea having a cup of tea like the act of having a cup of tea that's that's yeah. that's fika just less uh, hard cookies i guess more cinnamon buns yeah for sure less tea more coffee because that's and what it's i also mean kind of less official official yeah i guess yeah, for me, like, and this, again, as a complete foreigner, for me, tea time is a bit more official. Like, it's more, I want to say high class, like fancy. Mm. Are you saying that you would have, that you have had a a tea time with a British native? Um, or are you talking more like tea time, like playtime tea time? No, I'm talking about, like, the concept of tea time. For me, it just seems more high class. And that might just be because of movies actually which is interesting yeah but yeah for me tea time is something that it's just official it's just more official and fika is kind of casual it's like a, oh it's totally it's casual of, it would be yeah. interesting though to go over to britain and because i think the only way you would have proper tea would be with a native british person regardless okay. uh fika is only the verb is it a verb uh it's it's the only, it's what we do it's really just a fun gimmick i i would guess <clears throat> yeah 
we're talking about movies too, or at least that's the promise. That's the assumption. Yes, hopefully that we get to them. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how we were able to stick to movies and especially one movie in particular, because I mean, I think that pretty much goes for all that when you talk about one movie, you usually talk about a different movie as in parallel or yeah it was like oh yeah it's by that director who made that movie uh did you see that one no i didn't see that one and you oh that reminds me of that movie and then you completely forget that first movie agreed yeah but i mean i feel now that you brought it up in terms of how this podcast works it's basically just us talking about a specific movie every other week hopefully we are able to stick with that and we talk about a movie whether it's a new release or something that we just both want to talk about and um we drink coffee over the hour or so that we talk yeah i mean i do work at the movie theater nowadays which is great but i find some kind of strange obligation to watch every single movie that's in theaters right now Okay. I've quickly reali- realized that that's that's not feasible at all. Um, but uh, I do watch a lot of movies that are in theaters, so I might just like we might not fully talk about them in in one d- designated episode, but uh, I I might very well recommend it. In uh, yeah, in well, our the talks. thing is like <clears throat> some movies you can't really talk to them for hours. Um, I feel that it's very specific movies yeah. that you can talk about for that. Good movies you can. I guess that's kind of... And really shit movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hint, yes. hint. <laughs> hint for a future episode. Wow. Um, well, if they are that bad, I would say they're that bad that they're good, mm, I guess. Fair enough. That's no? great. No? That's a good adjective. Mm. I get that. So... It was my stupid idea to put together top 10 movies. Yes. Of course, in no specific order, because that would be impossible. I just feel like when you tell someone that you're a movie geek, of course, their question, their follow-up question is going to be, oh, what's your favorite movie? I mean, that's that's tough. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. No no true movie geek, I would like to say, are, is able to give them their top movie just like that that should be impossible yeah Uh, yeah, do you want me to start um yeah 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 you can start us off for sure so i have them yeah i have them right here i mean of course it's not a easy pick but i kind of went about it in the sense of uh every genre that i like and or director filmmaker uh, i've chosen one Uh, Yeah, kind of gone on with that. But on first spot, even though it's not in order, naturally the first one would be Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Yes. It's one of my all-time favorites. Uh, It's by Edgar Wright, one of my top, top, top directors. He's extremely visual, and I love that. He's a genius, yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, it's a great pick. Yeah, that that's basically the one that describes it encompasses my taste in movies pretty good. So that's mm. usually what I go with um when when someone asks me for my favorite movie. Because I'm not gonna be a dickhead about it and be like, uh well this one is good, but I also like that. I can't really pick. I, just to get out of a awkward situation, I usually go with Scott Pilgrim versus the world. <gasps> to move uh, things on. Choose. Absolutely. Um Pixar is one of my biggest like i i love pixar i would like to say it's a big statement but i'm pretty sure about it pixar is probably the best storytellers out there and my all-time favorite from pixar would definitely be wally it's just cute okay so i agree pixar is definitely up there and i it is a big statement um calling them the best storytellers but i think it's at least pretty damn close um, I feel like, of course, Pixar has had some rough films in the, yeah, lately, yeah. unfortunately. But um, they always have the perfect arc, perfect character development, and you always cry. If mm-hmm. at least me, if I go into a movie, <laughs> a Pixar film, I'm guaranteed to cry, and that's 
a very good sign because I don't really cry to movies. I cry right. like a baby to Wally, -E, however, and those are <laughs> robots. They are robots, yeah. lifeless things. And I cry. I think that says something about me, however. But probably. Yeah. Let's not open that door though. <clears throat> uh well after Wally -E, I have gravity. Uh, oh, what's his name? Quaron. Do you say that right? No. No. But keep going. <laughs> Uh, Gravity is just a great film, and and as I've tried to many times, I've tried to convince you, you should give it a second shot. I know, and honestly, the more that that, that we talk about it, because it is something that you keep bringing up, it is something that I'm like, okay, I'll do it. It's just, I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't for me that first time that I saw it. It just it. I think it had to do with the fact that I didn't see it in theaters. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, a huge part of it. Because um, because yeah. gravity, you really do need a surround system. Not necessarily yeah. a great one, but a good surround. You need to listen to it on high volume too, mm -hmm. in order to have the best gravity experience. Similar to my fourth pick, Arrival. Of course, you're gonna see a red line or like a similarity in the sci-fi ness of all these movies, but Arrival is right. just amazing, and I really love the rest of Denise. Uh, filmography as well. I have Arrival on mine too. Oh yeah, actually. look at that. Uh, oh yeah, 100%. Well, no. here's the thing. Yeah. I feel with Arrival, a lot of people like to call it pretentious or that it might be... Um, Who says that? Oh yeah. Oh, I've, I've had this conversation with someone that were like, oh, you know, it's supposed to be super deep or like trying to say something super serious but it's not that yeah. smart of a movie mm, that, no and well mm. i don't agree with that i think it's a really well made well thought out proper sci-fi movie I, that I, explores you know yeah humanity through this lens of like something otherworldly happening i mean i can see what you're saying uh they're probably trying a bit too hard but um i definitely don't see it as a pretentious film yeah um Regardless, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that, but I really like the 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 more human uh, sci-fi films like Blade Runner, like Arrival, mm. um, when it's more about humanity or something else rather than just uh, Star Wars, which is of course on my list. Specifically, Star Wars: A New Hope. It's, in my opinion, the best ones. A lot of people go with. Um, Revenge of the Sith. I think a lot of people like the most. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Empire. Mm? Yeah, regardless. Yeah. I, I like, like A New Hope. Five. A New Hope is a really good, especially because it works standalone. That that to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Star Wars A New Hope. That's... You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Of course, that one is completely just fun in space. Uh, I also have The Great Dictator by Charlie Chaplin. Uh, mm. Uh, I've always been a big fan of Charlie Chaplin. I remember when he was on TV and I would be like, oh, maybe maybe nine or ten years old. And I would laugh my, laugh my ass off. Dude, Chaplin is hilarious. I think a lot of people don't see his movies because of the silent aspect of it. Oh, yeah. And I understand it. And black like and white. People are so turned yeah. off of the black and white. Which I understand. I understand. It's not I the don't. easiest thing. Uh. It's like... It's like the whole subtitle, subtitle. Yeah, that word. Yeah, like people find it hard, and I understand it because they look at movies as a way to like just turn their brains off, and for them, subtitles and black and white and no sound mm. kind of voids that. But um, I feel like Chaplin is a good starting point for silent movies because they're just fun. They're actually funny. The guy was a genius when it came to comedy, especially physical comedy. Yeah. I think he was really good. And I think everyone should like give it a try. Yeah. And naturally, it's very difficult picking the top Charlie Chaplin uh, film. But I find The Great Dictator to... It has a special place in my heart. Um, mm. Not only because of the political aspects, or not aspect, but angle, rather, mm. uh, that it plays with. But... Um, I don't know. It was his first speaking role, too. I think that has some place in history. Um, Definitely does. It's a great film. That, that's all I can say. Uh, my next one, however, of my top 10 in no specific order, 
I was kind of hesitant on putting it on here even, but Secret Life of Walter Mitty. You know, I can see why that is on your list. Like, it's a very Agat movie. Yes. Um, and after you showed it to me, I've watched it like three or four times. No shit. Oh, yeah, totally. I think it's like, I think it's just really fun. It's, uh, yeah, it is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love I those think... characters that are very, uh, just completely out of it. Uh, I love the mm-hmm. sequences when he is uh, zoning out. I yeah. love that kind of atmosphere in a movie. And a uh, bottom line, when I watch movies, just like Star Wars, I just need to escape reality. I love yeah. escapistic films. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I see it. I agree. It's a nice movie. It's a really just fun, rewatchable movie. Yeah. No. And uh, another escapistic film, if that's even a word. I think so. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox by Wes Anderson. In my opinion, probably, yeah, definitely Wes Anderson's best film. I love him in stop motion. I find Wes to be at his peak in stop motion because he can mathematically calculate his camera movements, etc. But I mean, like, even with Isle of Dogs? Yeah, I think Fantastic is way better than I Love Dogs. I've only seen no, it No, 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 I, okay. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. But I meant, like, you said Wes is at his best with motion, anim- like, stop motion animation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people didn't like Isle of Dogs. I mean, yes, but would you be able to make, you know, the sequence that I'm talking about uh, when the dogs are walking up to some trash or whatever and yeah. uh, they stand there they open the trash bag up and like okay it's worth it and they attack each other that would not have been that wouldn't work in live action you could have oh, edited no. it it's yeah. edgar wright style it wouldn't have been good at all so yes wes anderson with his cinematic language his mm. his in my opinion he, he works the best in stop motion that's fair yeah he's very specific and <gasps> technically I don't know how to say it, but I understand what you mean. Like he's able to control every aspect of the frame because mm-hmm. it's animation. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, my top pick from Tarantino. Uh, you were a bit surprised still, by this. Yeah, I'm still surprised. I'm still surprised about it. I don't. I don't understand it. Do you have any Tarantino um, on your list? Is do you have any of your favorites? Would you be able to pick your favorite Tarantino? I, I don't have Tarantino on my list. Oh no, he almost made the, you know, the cut. Um, but it was just, I'll get to it when I talk about my list, Yeah. but he just didn't make the cut. Uh, in terms of my favorite, I think it's just Inglorious Bastards. Um, I really enjoy the way that he does dialogue and the way that he creates tension in that movie. I think it's amazing. It's damn. Also, Christoph Waltz speaking three different languages is four actually because i think he does speak italian too it's just amazing i love it it's great um but reservoir dogs i guess i don't look at uh, i don't look at actors that much but uh yeah there's a great ensemble of actors in uh, reservoir no uh inglorious Inglourious bastard, bastard. <gasps> yeah. yeah for sure reservoir dogs of course doesn't have that much dialogue uh, i guess that might be part of why i like it that much it's more story Especially mm. vis- visual at the uh, latter part of the second act. Mm. Regardless, my 10th pick of this uh, list uh, in no specific order is Fargo. A favorite of two of both of ours. Yeah. That's fair to say, no, right? Think, yeah. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Fargo's great. I love Fargo. I saw it like maybe a month ago. And it, oh man, uh-huh. it's so good. <laughs> Just the atmosphere again. That's what I go for a lot, and mm. the characters are just so dare I say relatable. Maybe that's me as as a Swede, but um, the Probably. characters are just so real. And of course, that's the strong suit of uh, those two guys. But uh, yeah, amazing. The, yeah, I feel the the interesting part about Fargo is that these characters do feel real, but even even they are a bit ridiculous. And I think that's mm. what yeah. the Coen brothers do really good. Uh, um, Fargo is not necessarily their funniest film, but you did see their Western this other year, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Ballads of whatever, whatever. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Too. That was peak humor of theirs. 
uh, yeah. glorious. I feel what Fargo has going for it is honestly just how it's a murder movie, but it's mm. not a murder movie. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, Roger Deakins is magnificent. Um, and everything he puts yeah. on camera is Dude. amazing to look at. Every single frame. Yeah. All right, then. On my 11th place of my top 10 films, uh, I have yeah. necessarily uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Right. Speaking of humor, uh, that fitted in very well. Well, you can't go wrong with Monty Python. British humor. British humor at the top. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think my dad showed I... me this film. Uh, and it's it's so rewatchable. I watch it at least mm. t- twice a year, I would like to say. And I can nice. quote almost all all of the movie i believe that i've seen i've seen some of that <laughs> yeah. um i don't know monty python is interesting to me because i got introduced to it fairly late like in your life I say, yeah yeah i want to say like three three or four years ago um, oh that actually. late oh yeah no 100 percent, totally late hmm. um but i still i I found it really funny, and I haven't seen all of their work. Um, I've seen Holy Grail. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen, what's the other one, Life of Brian? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good list. Uh, I think it kind of captures who you are as a person. Thank you. Thank you very much. Especially because there's 11 movies, and it's a top 10. Well, give me your top 10, then. Hmm... Here's the thing, um, making this list, mm-hmm. fucking nerve wracking, honestly, because it's like I would settle on a top 10 and then I would be looking through other stuff and I would remember a movie and I'd be like, oh shit, that's an awesome movie too. Um, so yeah, I feel it comes down to, for the most part, if anyone were to come up and tell me like, hey, let's watch this movie. Mm-hmm. I would say yes, like no hesitation. Mm. Um, and that applies to nine of the 10 movies. There's one where I'm like, it's a little bit heavier. I don't know if I want to see that all the time, but um, yeah, other than that, I I thoroughly enjoy these movies and I've seen them multiple times. And um, I'll start off with Arrival, mm-hmm. mostly because we both have it. Um, and we can get it out of the way. Arrival is just fun. I love it. I think Amy Adams is great. Just great. Hmm. Um, I like Hawkeye more in that film. <laughs> Hawkeye. Yeah, he's, he's good too. Hawkeye is good. Nathan something, right? No. No. Not at all. No. Jeremy. His name is Jer- Jeremy. Jeremy? <laughs> yeah, his name is Jeremy. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Um, and then... Um, I have La La Land. Mm. Yes, Swedish film cinematography. Yeah, <clears throat> and here's the thing: I think Damien Chazelle is great. First Man, I thought was pretty visually stunning. Um, I think there wasn't much of a story for me to be interested in as much as with his other two films. <clears throat> and when it came to choosing, I was gonna put Whiplash. Yeah. Honestly, because yeah. Whiplash is amazing. No, same here. But um, there's something about La La Land. When it came out, I think I watched it three times in theaters. And there's just something about Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling and how they work together and the chemistry that they have on s- screen that I think is really um, great. Also, <clears throat> kind of in the same vein as you of choosing a genre or a director and like representing that. I really enjoy musicals. Um, not all of them, definitely not all of them, but I, the ones that I like, I really, really like. So I think La La Land covers both aspects. To me, La La Land, I've never seen a film having such a perfect ending. I know yeah. it's I know it's bittersweet not to spoil it or anything. I, it would be fair game to spoil it at this point. I think it's fair game. Yeah, I think um, it's fair game for all of these movies. Regardless, 
I love the ending. It plays with your emotions and you're left alone at the end of it. And yeah, I, I, it's just masterful. Um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I've never seen a movie wrong. end that well. Of course, not necessarily in a happy ever after thing, but that's what I like about it. Yeah, me too. I remember um, the second time I watched it, I watched it with my brother. Mm. Uh, and we were walking out of the theater and he goes, I liked it a lot, but why couldn't they end, like, end up together? And I was like, oh, that's kind of the point. And I feel like yeah. a lot of people <clears throat> react the same way, where it's like, oh, I kind of just wanted a happy ending. But I like this bittersweet, more realistic take on the fact that they just don't end up together like a lot of people don't. Uh, moving on, I have a Pixar movie, Woo. like you, because uh, I think can they I are guess? great. May I guess? Yeah, for sure you can guess. Could it be uh, Coco? Okay, so here's the thing. It's not Coco. I know, it's not Coco. What? <laughs> um, but you're Mexican. I was, like, Coco was going to be in it because of what you just said, and because... I really appreciate what they did, and I think the story is great, and I think it's awesome. But Ratatouille mm. speaks more to me. Ooh, yes. In a lot of levels. It's so right? romantic. France. Um, Ooh, la, la. I see that movie all the time, <laughs> and I think it's great, and there's really not much else I can say about Ratatouille. Great, yeah. Yeah, I think. Mm. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so I have in kind of the same vein of being a Mexican person, uh, I have Pan's Labyrinth as a uh, part of my list yeah. because I think Guillermo del Toro is great. And I know that he's kind of blowing up right now because of the shape of water. Um, what has he been doing the past three years then? Well, he's been producing and writing. Other yeah. Stuff. He just kind of got a lot of, yeah. Right. Do you know if there's any film coming up though? Yeah, um, he. I, I think he's like shooting it right now, um, or at least he was. Mm -mm. But um, yeah. But pants labor. Pants labor. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, I love this whole modern fairy tale take that he has on it i think it's a very compelling story and i love how dark it is but also how sweet it is and i love an open ending i love this idea that you don't know you don't know what happens you know and it's kind of like up to us to choose how the story ends and i feel that also tells you a lot of it tells you a lot about a person how they choose um an ending for this movie so i think it's great and moving on um i have quite on on my list as well because mm -hmm. i think he's really good yeah um obviously i have roma ah. because yes that movie it meant a lot to me um still haven't seen as it. a movie i'm goer, sorry i know and i don't know if i want you to see it because oh. it's like I don't know if you're going to hate on it yeah. or you're going to love it. Yeah. So I don't know if I've seen maybe, much Quagon, actually. No, I have. I think you have. It's like Children of Men. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah. Gravity, the third Harry Potter. I like Harry Potter. I like Gravity. Man. Didn't love Children of Men. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But Roma, as a moviegoer, knocked me on my ass. Mm -hmm. Uh it just stuck with me like all of these movies have really. Um, and as a filmmaker, it kind of showed me the power that certain stories have, even though they're so specific and might be so personal. That's mostly when a general audience reacts. And it's, I think it's a really interesting exercise in filmmaking. I think it's great. I love that it's black and white, but not classic black and white. Yeah. Because um, it just works really well. I don't want to get too geeky, but sure. Yeah, sure. Um, 
sticking with black and white, there's a movie that I love, and every time I bring it up, people are like confused about it. But Casablanca, ah. I think yeah. for some reason stuck with me. I feel it's just this idea of me being a romantic. Yes. Um, I mean, you got Ratatouille on here. I mean, come on. Let's see. What else did you get? La La Land. Yeah. You are romantic. One. And Damn. the one that I, I'm i going to speak about later is also kind of like a romantic movie. So, <clears throat> um, But I just like it. Casablanca is mm. just nice. It's fun. It's a classic. Yeah. I think Ingrid Bergman is a goddess on screen. You really to be like completely her, eh? honest. Oh, I really, really like her. Oh. Um, I think she's great. Um. Yeah, not much else to say there. Um, and then her. Ah, uh, right. By, um, Spike Jones. I think it's a great sci-fi, and I love when people use sci-fi to create like a whole escape, like Star Wars did. Which, you know. Um, but I like when it's used to explore humanity and how our data life works and i think her explores human relationships in a very good way and it's just a beautiful movie to look at as well yeah it's just so pretty it's it's great i think it's great joaquin phoenix kills it like always yeah Mm -hmm. i mean well-deserved oscar there oh yeah for sure. It was pretty... I mean, I don't think there was much question about it. Um, no. But, um, yeah, he's, he's great. Um, sticking with that vein, I guess, uh, number three would be Before Sunset. Before oh, we're Sunset? Going like, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Which one? Is, refresh my so, mind, I guess. So it's a movie by Richard Linklater. Link Ladder. Is I it, think it's Link Ladder. Um, is that a trilogy? It is. Ah, it yes. Is. Uh-huh. So it, it's the second movie in the trilogy. Um, so there's Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight. And there's just something really cool about it. Basically, the cast and crew got together every nine years to make these movies. So, and that time happens within the movie. So we see these characters three times within a span of time. Mm. And I think it's really amazing how he uses time and the fact that time has actually gone by to tell the story and to show how these characters have changed throughout the years and how the relationship has changed. And um, yeah, before sunset, everyone should... Honestly, give the trilogy a try. Sounds very, um, um, pardon the expression, but it sounds like a chick flick, like bad. So here's the thing. Because it is a romantic movie, I guess you could go that route, but it's really not that at all. Um, it's very human. And I think, I think it's for everyone mm-hmm. who can sit through a movie that might not have much of a plot. Sure. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, if you if you can't stand that type of movie, then yeah. Um, and then totally switching gears. Uh, I have the Social Network. Oh, uh, yeah, by yeah. David Fincher. Because mm. Aaron Sorkin writing a script is obviously going to be a good script. He has very sharp, witty dialogue. Um, I think. This is one of my favorite Jesse Eisenberg performances. I think he does a great job. And obviously Fincher has such a way to tell a story that could be potentially boring, which is the creation of Facebook. But the way that he handles camera and the way that he handles story and character, I think it's really cool. And dialogue in that one, especially. Yeah, for sure. I, I watched this movie, I don't know, like twice, three times a year, for sure, Mm. just because I like the dialogue of it and I can quote certain parts of it and I think it's just really good. And I mean, li- li- literally, uh, Social Network specifically was pioneering within the VFX industry. So, oh yeah, he got it all, man. It's a full package. Yeah. 
And then number one, I guess, even though this is out of order and it's completely <laughs> up in the air. But yes. uh, uh, I have Silence of the Lambs. Oh. Uh, oh. Because I've always enjoyed murder movies. Mm-hmm. I love cop movies. I love twisted shit. And I think this was one of the first ones that I saw that introduced me to the whole genre. Like after this, Ah, you know, you move into Seven or Zodiac or Insomnia and all these other movies. But I think I always come back to this and back to Anthony Hopkins and just how very nicely crafted the story is. And you saw it when we were in school like three of our editing teachers brought it up. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I think it's really good. So uh, yeah. I saw it for the first time last year. Uh, it's been on my list for forever, but um, yeah, I never really have been able to figure out what the film is about judging by the cover of the film. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, simply what was my question? When did you, at what age did you see it? If you saw it, did you see it early on, I mean? Because um, I wouldn't show that to my 10-year-old. You know what I'm so, saying? No, I, I I get what you're saying. And realistically speaking, I did, m- my parents weren't like, oh, you can't see this. But because of how I grew up and stuff like that, um, I didn't know this other world of movies until I got yeah. Um, more like when you start going onto YouTube and Reddit and all these other like social platforms. <clears throat> and I think I was like 14, probably. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Found like a YouTube list, probably, mm. and then saw it. And I was definitely like, oh, my parents would not be happy that I'm looking at this. Um, but it is what it is. And. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's really creepy. Lovely. Did, did you want to bring up your honorable mentions, though? Oof. Honorable mentions? Oh. For sure. Uh, Inception. You know? Because I love that movie. And it kind of... Um, it was the first time that I looked into a movie and I was like, how the fuck did they do that? So... In, what, in um, the story aspect? No, I meant like mostly obviously like visual effects but i don't know there was something about it that just made me really curious and i'm pretty sure that's kind of what got me started as someone who like it piqued my interest what to movies what a cliche more than with that one, oh 100 percent that kid oh, yeah. died that it's one like, director it could be like a pulp fiction yeah <laughs> uh kind of thing for sure but no you um, had to go with christopher nolan just like every yeah. other filmmaker out there <laughs> but uh yeah for sure yeah. good honorable mentions um, what else <laughs> uh i have more recent movies that i didn't want to put like on this top list yeah, fair because enough. they're recent and i don't know how they will like stand the test of time um but i think spider-man into the spider-verse was fucking amazing yeah and i really enjoy that movie and technologically and story-wise and characters i think it's really cool um and i think those are the ones that come the most to mind um yeah what about you do you have any no uh i mean of course there's a lot but uh i feel like my top 10 kind of wraps it up in a bag pretty nicely cool i do i do but um since we are pretty much ending every episode from here on out with a uh, it's a ranking right out of five right yes yes out of five including half points yes yeah sure Uh, so i mean my my top 10 would definitely be all would be top five let me just look through i yeah yeah for sure uh five but like i'm very I'm very generous when it comes to ranking. You are. I am, definitely. If you were to look at my... Which is weird, though, because it's like, you're generous, but you're also a real dick when you don't like a movie. Yeah. And it's like, fuck this. I know what I like. (laughs) Mm. 
No, yeah, that's fair. I won't even argue. Um, no, I'm generous with giving ratings, but I would like to see it as in, just to bring one movie as an example, uh, Mean Girls. Mean Girls yeah. is a very cliche movie. And literally, the first time I saw Mean Girls, I think I saw it with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And literally five minutes, maybe seven minutes into the film, I was like, okay, so we've been introduced to these, we've been introduced to the plastics and uh, the friend group, whatever. So she's gonna get together with the plastic and like it a bit too much, and then she's gonna go fall back to her friends and cry all and all over. They won't really accept her, and yada yada yada. And I lay out the plot, as I suspect it's gonna become. Right. And she. Because you're a dick. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the moment she won't acknowledge the fact that I'm absolutely right. But right. seven minutes into, uh, what's it called? Mean Girls. girls. Um, I, I've already figured it out how it's going to end. It's very predictable. Yeah. Does that mean it's a bad film? I would not say so. I love Mean Girls. Mean Mar Girls is amazing for what it is, okay. for the audience yes. that it's for. I don't right. think you can compare Transformers, which is an action-packed, awesome, cool, masculine, testosterone-horny uh, film. You can't compare that to uh, Tarantino <laughs> Pulp Fiction because they're completely different. Yeah. I feel like I could have Agreed. made better examples, but um, yeah, Transformers. Yeah, you're coming off pretty basic right now. <laughs> Transform you're coming off pretty basic right now, yeah. Transformers is great for what it is, what it's made for. Uh, Tarantino is Tarantino, is, and it's always going to be appreciated no matter how, what his personal stance is. But um, yeah, so I, I might be generous with it, granted, but uh. I feel like a lot of films deserve more appreciation than what they get. Okay, that's fair. You different from me. I, I'm not even hesitant to say it, but you do watch more films than I. You watch more niche films than I as well. Um, right. So how do you go yes. about... You, did, you said before that you aren't necessarily picky with what you watch as long as someone uh, recommends it to you or, or so. Fair. But um, That's very fair. How would you rate a film? Um, when it comes to my ratings, and this is the thing about ratings and like trying to review a piece of art is that it comes down to your own personal taste and the subjectivity behind it. Um, when I rate a movie, for the most part, it comes down to how much I enjoyed it. Mm. And then below that, the technical aspect of it. Um, there's two movies that come into mind regarding that example. Like Climax or more recently Uncut Gems. I had a f fucking awful time watching those movies. Ah, yeah. Like they make you anxious. They stress you out. They're aggressive. They're violent. Like it's not a nice time. Yeah. And it's not like I'm waiting to see them again because i'm really not it it was it was ho horrible it was intense so but i can see the care and the technic prowess that it takes to make a movie like that and to have that control over your audience and and all that so if it was all about my enjoyment, it w they wouldn't get very high scores. But because I also like put into perspective the work and the technicality and all this shit, um, they get a higher rating than than normal, I guess. Yeah. Um, than average. So, yeah, I feel it just comes down to my mood. <laughs> I've rated I've rated movies. It does, doesn't then, it? Yeah. Yeah. And then like a couple of weeks pass and I look back into it and I'm like, I think I was too nice to this or I think <laughs> I was too harsh to this. And then I'll switch it. So I guess that's that. Ah, I feel I'm not really that anal that I care. Like if I rated it that on a Saturday, I'll keep it. If I rewatch it, I'll re rate it. Yeah. Uh yeah, whatever. I, I'm just, I think I'm just the type of person who overthinks things. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh man, I should go back and change this because this makes no sense. Mm. Um, 
But yeah. Yeah, regardless, uh, I think it's important to know who you're talking to uh, when you're talking yes. movies, or at least from sure. how they see films and how they, yeah, look at them. I, I feel like both of us are fairly on the same page that we are looking for visually interesting, or at least that appeals mm -hmm. to both of us, visual storytelling rather than anything else. Yes, Maybe I like those. I do look at actors more than I do, certainly. Yeah. I don't... I, I think... Acting, to yeah, me, doesn't no. make or break the film. Oh, but it does, though. Mm. No. I feel. I don't know. It should. Maybe a little bit. I'm just bad with names, but actors are s simply not a priority of me to... Do you think that's because you want to be a cinematographer and that's it? Like, it's more about what's on frame than who's on frame? Yeah. I think I feel like you can move on from a bad acting rather than bad directing. Because if it's bad directing, probably. it ruins probably the entire experience yeah. or major parts of it. If it's just one bad actor, of course, if it's a main actor, you're in trouble. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, yes. I just don't see acting in the same way as you do. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I think it's interesting that you talk about the difference that we have because endings are super important to you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. for you, an ending will make or break a film. Yes. It's like you could have been loving that film. And if you don't like the ending, fuck the whole movie. It's how you're left to feel. Um, I mean, yeah. But for me, it's like, I can, I can forgive a mediocre or an unsatisfying ending. If the journey there was worth it for me. Yeah, but if I but if I leave the auditorium feeling anticlimactic, I'm just yeah. It's like yeah, I'm that. not I'm, I'm not going to put that film to mind if I'm leaving the cinema feeling mediocre. Of course. Uh, yeah. That's fair. Last impressions. And first impressions too. Those are the yeah. main ones. Cool. I need a refill on my coffee, bro. Yeah, me too. I think I think this cup of coffee is over. Thank you guys for listening. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. And we hope you join us on the next episode where we'll be talking about Onward, the new Pixar movie that is coming out. The deep and gritty. Of course, this has just been an introduction pod uh, with the two of us, uh, really. Yeah. Getting to know each other. Um, yeah. I would like to say that I'm very excited for this, actually. Uh, mo too. Most and foremost, to actually talk about films and not to get distracted, like talk about one specific movie for a longer period of time, but also uh, talking with you. It's um, to actually have an excuse to talk with you. Um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be nice. I think that's nice. Spending some time together and catch up. Every other week. Every other week. 